if all goes well, this is a special occasion because we're going to be joined, I believe. I wonder if the control room can confirm. Are we, in fact, getting through? Okay, so we're, go- we're now joined by one of the most distinguished European historians of the current age. It is Annie Lacroix. It's written L-A-C-R-O-I-X dash R-I-Z. She is Professor Emerita, I believe, at the University of Paris uh, 7. She is one of the most uh, successful and uh, noted mavericks in the entire world of uh, historical research in Europe, and in particular, (laughs) two two books that I would like to to point to. One is called The Choice of Defeat. Mm -hmm. Uh, The thesis here is essentially that the French uh, ruling class, the financiers of the Bank of France and the Banque Vorme, W-O-R-M-S, written Worms, that uh, that group in uh, in Paris uh, deliberately wanted Hitler to defeat France in the spring of 1940, and that they used their two organizations, the so-called Synarchists, or Synarchy organization, high-level group, and then the um, the operative arm of that, uh, known as the Kagul, the hooded uh, gang, right? And uh, uh, we've talked in, in the past on this show about how the people who wanted to overthrow Roosevelt in the 1930s were learning lessons from the 1934 uh, attack on the French uh, National Assembly. She's got another book called From Munich to Vichy, which is a story about how the French Republic was destroyed, uh, Hitler from the outside, and this French... Uh, pro-fascist group from the inside. She has also written about the the role of uh, the Vatican, Pius XII, and other forces in uh, in promoting uh, the rise of fascism in Europe. She's written, I believe, two books on the corruption of the historical profession in our time. And uh, the the thing that I wanted to start with, I hope we can get to, to talk about a number of those points, but the first one has to do with uh, Ukraine and the so-called Holodomor, the idea that there was a deliberately created genocidal famine in Ukraine in, uh, what, 1933, 1934, and that this had been politically imposed by Stalin and others. And she finds that, uh, well, let, let's get her to tell us. M- uh, welcome, uh, uh, Madame Ri. Hello. Hello, we're so happy to have you. Hey, I'm happy too. So please tell us now. You, let's let's start with the Holodomor and your research yes, on that. It, it it's not specifically my uh, my study, but once with my stu- students, um, I had to uh, uh, publish or to give them uh, original text about the uh, situation in uh, Russia and uh, of course Ukraine in the thirties. And I discovered in uh, diplomatic papers that um, what what was called uh, the uh, the Ukrainian famine was uh, uh, appeared uh, very differently in these papers because uh, so I wrote no book but I spoke of the of the problem in uh, uh, in my last my last books. Uh, but uh, I made a no book uh, about that. It's on my website, uh, a text of 60 pages with the, uh, the diplomatic papers and my, my critics about the papers. You know, it's a, a critical present, uh, a presentation of, uh, of uh, diplomatic papers. And it uh, it may be described um, uh, as uh, I um, I'm going to try to do. Uh, there was in Ukraine in in um, uh, Soviet Union and mostly in Ukraine, but not only in Ukraine. There was a very severe drought, uh, a double problem for um, uh, for harvest. A very severe drought in 1932-33, uh, 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 very severe drought. 
Not not only in Ukraine, but in the south of uh, Soviet Union. And, of course, the harvest uh, was uh, 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 severely um, uh, diminished by this drought. And uh, the uh, social and political situation was um, still... uh, um, uh, um, how could I say? I'm forgetting the attack. It was very um, tense. It was, uh, it was conflictual. Uh, it, it, was, uh, uh, it was marked by the consequences of uh, collectivization and anger among, among rich uh, peasantry, who were, were, were peasants who were called kulaks. And uh, th- this anger, this... Uh, uh, this anger was exploited by Germany and German agents, and it's a, th- this is a specific problem for Ukraine, uh, which we uh, uh, and 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 uh, we we talk about that uh, on the more general question of Ukraine, because. Um, uh, Ukraine was a, a very important target, uh, political and, and mostly economic, economic target for Germany. And uh, uh, its agents um, uh, took advantage of the, uh, of the political situation and tried mostly uh, at the beginning of the 30s and still more when Nazis came to power uh, to uh, exploit this uh, this uh, this um, uh, social problem and uh, for instance the uh, agricola the um, attaché uh, uh, in the German embassy in Moscow, Otto Schiller, uh, who was uh, uh, mostly uh, devoted to uh, country problems, uh, uh, harvest problems and so on, right. played an important part. And what, what shows, it was uh, among the texts I discovered, uh, what showed there, there was no Still no famine in uh, 93, in the beginning of 93, in February 93, uh, he published a report, a very long report, which has been translated in, in French. It's in the uh, Quai d'Orsay archives, in the archives of uh, foreign, French Foreign Office. And... Uh, the, this report um, uh, speaks about the, the uh, awful uh, Soviet organization, but there is no word about famine. And um, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the situation was very difficult. At the end of 33, at the beginning of 30, uh, at, the, at the end of 32, at the beginning of 33, because uh, in the period between uh, the exhaustion of the old harvest and the new harvest, but not only in Ukraine, uh, because um, the diplomatic papers showed uh, showed that the uh, rationing, the food rationing, was more severe in the north of Russia, for instance, in Leningrad and Moscow, than in the southern uh, uh, country. And the, uh, the hang on one second. The, the music tells us that we've just got one of our uh, inevitable. Uh, station uh-huh. breaks for some advertising, and we'll be right back with Annie Lacroix-Rie, a uh, distinguished French historian on the question of the Holodomor in Ukraine and other topics. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio, Webster Carpenter here in Washington. Very happy to be joined by uh, Annie Lacroix-Rie, French historian who has written on uh, any number of uh, topics, 20th century history in particular, and she's in the course of telling us <laughs> that the so-called deliberately provoked famine in Ukraine in the early 1930s was not Ukrainian and was a result more of natural 
causes, lack of water, a drought, uh, and not so much the result of any political dis- political uh, decision. Is that about right? Yes, but but I think that the the political situation in Ukraine uh, was important too, because Germans uh, ask. Uh, it was not difficult to to ask them, uh, ask rich peasants to to keep the harvest, to keep the the grains uh, during the the difficult period between the old harvest and the new harvest. But what is important too is that. The food um, shortage didn't strike only Ukraine, but all the south of Russia, uh, Caucasus, Kazakhstan, and so on. And that, that's the first problem. The second problem is that we are sure, absolutely sure, that the, the difficult food situation stopped, really stopped, in the summer of 1933, with a very good harvest in July uh, 33. Oh, and what's uh, remarkable is that the campaign, the political campaign, just began in the summer of 1933. And I think we might uh, speak of the campaign, uh, speaking generally of the uh, the Ukrainian the Ukrainian question, and uh, there's um, something very important which uh, makes uh, very nervous the, the historians who talk, who talk in, in France. I think of Nicolas Nicolas Vert, who talk of the. Uh, uh, genocide or a, a genocide famine in Ukraine. Uh, you know, there is no photograph, there is no one photograph of the Ukrainian famine in 1933. I'm absolutely uh, uh, categoric on, on this point. And these last days, I was interviewed uh, by a French journalist with Nicolas Vert, and Nicolas Vert got very nervous because he had to acknowledge that all the photos published since the 30s, because uh, as, I, uh, as I said, the campaign began in 1933, organized by Germany, uh, Poland, Vatican, I might say all the German allies. All the photos published since... I mean, since 1933, uh, as far as uh, the, the, the present times, are old photos of the frightful famine of 1920, uh, 1921, which is, as you know, the consequence of the foreign war imposed upon uh, the German, the, the Russian people, because... Uh, uh, of uh, uh, this revolution, it was not, as it's so often said, only a civil war. It was, as um, a French leader said in 1937, uh, a French uh, prime minister, Chautin, said, speaking of the uh, war in Spain, it was a civil uh, foreign war, uh, war. and uh, um, a writer who was before writing uh, a photographer, a professional photographer, Douglas Turtle, wrote a book that any uh, listener uh, might um, download because it's, it, it has been out of pr- uh, print uh, since a long, uh, for a long time. The, 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 uh, the book um, is, um, the, the name of the book, the title of the book is Fraud, Famine, and Fascism, hmm. the Ukrainian Genocide Myth from Hitler to Harvard. And uh, it has been written in 1987. You have the physical proof that no photo uh, has been taken in 
33. And it was uh, uh, like that in 1987. It's still like that. And when I said to the journalist I spoke of that that it's it's a problem because uh, every uh, uh, people making uh, a paper on the Ukrainian famine, uh, mostly when when is uh, the, the the famine is uh, said to be a, a, a Stalinian genocide, are that kind of photos, or it's imp- and it's impossible to hide. Um, to hide uh, this kind of things. You know, it was forbidden to photograph uh, Jewish uh, 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 slaughter. It was absolutely forbidden. We have millions of photos. There is no event even uh, strictly forbidden for photographer. Uh, there is no event in the uh, 20th century with, uh, that has not been photographed. All right, and, so and, the, and the story it's, of it's, the it's famine... A prob- the it's a problem. The, the myth of genocide cannot settle, you know. And I, I show... Uh, uh, the listener may, may uh, read on my web- website, of course, in French, <laughs> But they may uh, read the 60 pages of text and, and critics I, I, uh, I uh, um, published on this thing. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we must uh, explain why the, campaign, the, the famine campaigns begin... Uh, just when the uh, the food the, um, shortage stopped, there was no famine in uh, uh, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six. It was over, you know. And uh, that's the problem of the political campaign. The political campaigns are uh, all linked to. The more general uh, question of Ukraine. Okay, uh, yeah, the, hold that the, thought. We'll be back in one second after the pause. Annie Lacroix, French historian on Ukraine in the 1930s. We're going to bring it up to the present time to some extent. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. We're continuing our conversation with Annie Lacroix, French uh, historian. So uh, what we've come to now is that the the Deliberate famine in Ukraine is a myth, and it uh, it stretches from Hitler to Harvard. I would just like to ask one more question about this. You mentioned uh, Germany, Poland, the Vatican. I think you've also written about fascist Italy being a part yes. of this. But how about the William Randolph Hearst Press here in the United uh, yes. States? Uh, it, uh, uh, William uh, Randolph Hearst uh, was, a, uh, was one of the leaders of this campaign because this campaign was uh, very uh, uh, hard in, in, uh, in the United States and Canada mostly and uh, as, uh, almost as much uh, as uh, in Germany and uh, its allies. Of course, and and what is most important is that campaign soared every time Ukraine uh, was a, a terrible stake in uh, in international questions. That's uh, that is very often in the thirties, in the forties, of course, in the uh, during uh, the Second World War, after the war. Uh, in the Reagan years, it terribly soared in the in the eighties, and and that's uh, why Douglas Total was interested in the question. And as you know, uh, when uh, the United States uh, these last years um, began to. Uh, uh, have uh, uh, to not be begun, but uh, wanted to have a definite grip on Ukraine with the uh, Orange Revolution and so on. 
the pain pen sold uh, a new and uh, I think many people don't know the the uh, the aspect of the campaign. You know, when I was uh, attacked in uh, um, these last years, bec- because I had published these diplomatic papers, I, I was attacked by uh, Ukrainian associations, uh, who, which had a leader. Uh, the leader was uh, the, uh, the, world, the Ukrainian World Congress uh, in Washington. Right. And this Congress, uh, who, who had uh, an official protection, led by Askold Lozinski, led a terrible campaign, not only an anti-Soviet campaign, but as in the... Uh, in, in the the, uh, uh, the situation of nowadays, the, the 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 last month situation with anti-Semitic arguments, you know, um, uh, in uh, to, in um, two thousand two, he wrote to the New York Times, to the magazine New York Times. Uh, th- this uh, letter uh, it's, uh, uh, it dates back to July 18, uh, 2002, and he replied to to a reader who had uh, sent to the New York Times a letter about the uh, the myth of the of the genocide of the Stalin uh, uh, Stalinian genocide, and that's what he. Uh, Wrote, dear, dear editor, reading what happened to Uncle Schmiel uh, by uh, by uh, a Jewish reader who talked about the uh, the terrible uh, uh, anti-Semitism in Ukraine and mostly in Western Ukraine, which was not Soviet in the uh, during uh, the interwar which was Polish at that right. time, you know, because Ukraine was severed and a big part of it, the western part of it, uh, went to Poland. And this is the and, famous and, city and, of Lvov. So Lvov was Poland. Yes, the, the, western, the, the western part, uh, what, what has been uh, called the Curzon Line, uh, the Curzon Line, right. which was uh, which was uh, um, a limit, uh, uh, the ethnic uh, limit um, was not respected in the twenties, and with the protection of France, Poland, Poland which was the leader of uh, what was called the uh, uh, Cordon Sanitaire. Uh, uh, put uh, uh, t- took a big part of Ukraine, and uh, I come back to Lozinski. He says I was I was struck in particular by Daniel Mandelson's statement that thanks to the Ribbentrop Molotov Pact, the Soviets took over Western Ukraine in 1939, and the Jews there had two years of related security. And uh, that's what uh, Lozinski replies. I quote, I only quote, the Soviet occupation of Western U- Ukraine, that, that is uh, Polish Ukraine, in 1939 brought about the arrest and internment of tens of thousands of, Ukraine, of Ukrainians accused of patriotic activity. These uh, uh, Ukrainians, uh, uh, Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainians were mostly Bandera Ukrainians, uh, or uh, uh, the uh, inheritors of uh, um, uh, the the pogromists of the of the twenties. Right. When uh, when the Soviets, you will see the the the, the anti-Semitism of the. Of the writing, when the Soviets were forced to retreat from the invading Nazis in June 1941, they slaughtered, they slaughtered their prisoners. That this was accomplished with the assistance of local communists, primarily of Jewish 
Jewish ethnicity, and so on and so on. All the rest of the letter is uh, a slander against uh, Bolshevik who are uh, uh, Jewish. And uh, uh, the uh, the myth of a slaughter made by uh, uh, by uh, the Jews. Norman Davis, you know, uh, that is uh, what we call in France revisionist historians. But uh, uh, in France, the term uh, revisionist is very negative. It's not the, the the same meaning as in French. You know, it mostly means negationist. Uh, Holocaust denied, denial, in other words. Yes, we deny the right. existence of uh, of uh, the um, the ways of uh, uh, slaughtering Jews. Norman David, the renowned the renowned British historian, has concluded that no no nation lost more people in the twentieth century than the Ukrainian to a large degree. This was a result of both communist and Nazi activity in Ukraine. The Russian and the Germans were savage, but the Jews were the worst. Mm. They betrayed their neighbors and did it with such zeal. It's a pure lie, as you know. And so what we, what I think the general lesson is that we, we're seeing a, a return of Nazism and fascism under NATO U.S. Yes. Uh, auspices, and, and these are some of the things that they bring forward. Yes, it's, it's the same kind of campaign we, uh, uh, we see today. You know, uh, the, the floated, uh, are, uh, 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 are, um, um, Accused. Uh, the victim of, is of blamed. Being, of being the victim the is blamed. Uh, the We're going to be back in a minute. One minute, yeah. and we'll be back for our final segment on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to our final segment of this week's World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley here in Washington, D.C., talking to Annie Lacroix, French historian of uh, Ukraine in the 1930s, but also generally um, the fascist era in Europe in particular. Um, I would like to shift, if we could, from, from Ukraine in the 30s to your general thesis that you've put forward in books like From Munich to Vichy, The Vatican, Europe, and the Third Reich, and uh, The Choice of Defeat uh, in particular. And, and the way we can do this, I hope, is uh, I know it's Stepan Bandera that we've been talking about, the Nazi in, in Ukraine. There are probably two dozen statues in western Ukraine of Step Stepan yes. Bandera, yes. but in France, are there any statues of Marshal Pétain that you write about so much in, uh, in these other books? Yes, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we in France have no statues, but, uh, we, <laughs> of course, uh, uh, many, many, uh, um, fans of Pétain were, <laughs> were left very powerful at the end of the, of the war or after the, what we call the liberation. Right. And, uh, uh, that, that's, of course, a difference. Uh, between the situation in, in Western Ukraine uh, and and France today, because as we know, uh, the, the 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 rightist movements are uh, directly uh, come directly from uh, the movements uh, protected and uh, fostered by uh, um, by uh, Roman uh, Church. By the Vatican, because uh, it, it's uh, it's not um, uh, developed these days in in France, and we don't we don't speak of the the question of uh, uniqueism, uh, and uh, we have no time now. We are go going to speak of dictatorship in in France too, but that's a very important problem. And but if I could, just in the, in the couple of minutes we have left, I regard your work as the key not only to understanding France in the 1930s or 20s, the interwar period, but I think what you have done is also the key to understanding the United States in the 1930s, because the, the Morgan coup 
against uh, Roosevelt, let's say, in 1934. We, we probably had um, four to five coup attempts against Roosevelt. We had uh, attempted assassinations, and then I think a successful yeah. assassination. And you go through this in your your book, The Coup of Marshal Lyotte in the 1920s, and then yeah. the one we've just had the anniversary of, the, uh, the, uh, the attack on the French National Assembly in February of 1934. Could you just state, for, for, the, for the listeners who, who have never heard of Sinarchy or Kagul, what this was? Uh, the, the Sinarchy was a very tiny group of uh, uh, financiers, of, uh, of bankers mostly, and uh, bankers uh, whose interests were uh, uh, peculiarly important in the colony, in the colonies in um, 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 the French Africa, Empire, at the Africa, time. Asia, uh, n- not only the Banque France, but the Banque d'Indochine, uh, la Banque Louis II, and so on. And these people. Um, began to uh, uh, foster uh, a di- dictatorship project, not in the 30s, in the 20s. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 19, uh, 1922, uh, um, uh, it was the, the period when uh, finance people uh, were very attached to uh, restore dictatorship, for two reasons, the crisis of uh, the post uh, World War, uh, World War, the very difficult period uh, from uh, war economy to uh, peace economy, and uh, the, the deep anger um, of the uh, Soviet Revolution, not only for ideological reasons. But because uh, so uh, Russia was a very uh, a very precious treasure, you know, uh, foreign capital uh, mm-hmm. had taken possession of Russia. All the modern economy was foreign, and no, n- not only French, British, German, American too, and these people. Wanted in the crisis of the, the crisis of the, the economic crisis of the twenty to um, uh, diminish to um, reduce uh, wages very hard uh, to uh, of course uh, to maximize profits and the only way to do this was to have very hard dictatorship. So these international bankers, among them, of course, French bankers, had settled the question of Italian debt by choosing uh, the uh, Mussolini uh, solution. Not only French bankers, but uh, British bankers, uh, uh, American bankers, and so on. And it's in the year 1922, which was so important for the, um, the settlement of dictatorship in Europe, it's at, in that year that the synarchy was founded. At the beginning, with 12 persons, 12 bankers. We know 11 of them, but what we know uh, is that in the 30s, there was the most powerful uh, of these synarch were about 30. And in the 40s, uh, we have uh, the, the best, the best list is uh, the list uh, of Henri Chavin for the, li- the um, um, a kind of uh, uh, um, secretary for police. Uh, one of the uh, of the people named before René Bousquet, who is uh, more famous, uh, Henri Chavin gave to Pétain a list of the most important. There were less 
than 50. And the most famous of them were at that time, because the list uh, was of uh, 1941, at the beginning of uh, the regime de Vichy, the most important of them were both bankers or uh, uh, industrial uh, 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 people and secretaries in the Vichy government. Because in the Vichy government, they uh, take uh, the power, the, all the aspects of the power, of the political power, which was relati- relatively new. It's, it's more usual in the, the United States uh, that a banker is a, a treasury secretary, you know? It was mm-hmm. uh, it was not so uh, uh, it it was not the habit uh, it was not the custom in France. Vichy made that, and this synarchy was um, uh, you know the the French imperialism is rather weak since the beginning of the of, of these uh, uh, spe- uh, pe- pe- peculiar fa- phase of uh, capitalism. And it has taken the habit to uh, uh, look for protect protectors. All right, I'm so sorry. We've run out of time. The music tells us our time is gone. Um, we've been honored to talk to uh, Anila Quarry. I hope we can get her back uh, soon. Let me just tell you, if you want to uh, try your luck reading some French, her website is called Historiography. And that is historiography as in English, except drop the Y at the end and add I-E. So you get www.historiography.info. And there you can find uh, the 60-page document, I believe, about uh, about the Holodomor. Thank you very much. We hope we can get you back soon. And we're sorry we didn't have enough time to uh, to finish as much as we wanted. But at least it's a good beginning. See you next week on World Crisis Radio.